I am truly out in the garden at Out in the Garden Nursery in Malala with Carol. And Carol, you know, I love your display beds because you. you can teach us through these display beds on how to garden under trees. Yeah, it's a challenge and we, we have things do better and worse in other areas. Sometimes we listen to the plants and let the plant tell us what's doing better and, and maybe it needs to be in a different spot. But yeah, it's the, definitely the garden tells us a lot. Well, and we should listen because sometimes things aren't happy and don't be afraid to move them because you can find another spot where they'd be more happy. That's the beauty of perennials. Perennials, <laughs> you can always move them. Right, Never right. a problem. Well, you picked out a great selection, so let's start in. Okay. Um, I try to pick a variety of things because part of gardening in the shade is, is colors and textures mm. and not necessarily flowers. Correct. But I do have something with flowers. So we'll start with this. This is um, Actea uh, White Pearl. It's actually a fall blooming plant. Um, it's I have some in the garden with buds on them now, but so but they often have a long blooming process before they actually open. The other beauty of these is they're super fragrant. Oh, um, nice. And you can't miss when they're blooming, you, you catch the, the smell as you walk by. Um, so these like, the, they do like moisture, they don't take summer dry very well, um, but they usually bloom sometimes as late as middle of October, oh, nice. um, which is a really nice time sure. of the year to have flowers. They get in the neighborhood of, um, four feet high in bloom. The foliage isn't quite as tall, but it has this wonderful airy texture, and so it adds interest to the garden all season long. Nice, nice. And ferns. I mean, there's fern. shade gardens depend on ferns, ferns for texture. The, and there's so many. It was really hard just to pick a couple. <laughs> so this right here is Sertomium Fortunii, or Fortune's Holly Fern. The holly ferns are several different kinds. They're just wonderful texture. They're semi-evergreen. It really depends on what our winter, okay. a mild winter like we just had. Um, they're absolutely evergreen. A cold winter, they get a little burnt back, but they come back beautifully in the right. spring. And if you could talk about these spots on the back, those are not yeah, bugs. They're not bugs. That is, that's how you tell it's a fern. Everybody says, that's not a fern. I said, sure it is, because right. that's spores. That's how a fern reproduces. Uh, nice. And this one is very prolific. Right. But yet it doesn't necessarily reseed in the garden, but it has a lot of spores right. on it. Right, which is that one? This one is um, the Bran uh, Branford Rambler um, Anthurium. So it's a type of a lady fern. And this is a really wonderful one too. A lot of people don't even see this plant in the springtime because it's just a green fern. But if you come and see it midsummer, you can see how the stems are starting oh, to darken pretty. up on this uh -huh. backside. That gets brighter and brighter or deeper, richer Beautiful. as the season progresses. So this plant in May and this plant in August are almost different plants. Nice. Then you have a very tiny one, very delicate down that's here. That's one of my absolute favorite ferns. I think that's a must for everybody's garden. Beautiful. That's um, a, a Himalayan maidenhair fern. It's a dwarf evergreen maidenhair fern. Pretty. Gets just inches tall and slowly spreads out. It's fantastic. It's even on the coldest of winters, it stays evergreen. It's a wonderful bottom layer of the garden. And with shade plants, you can give them morning sun. That's Absolutely. Okay. Oh, morning sun is fine. What they don't like is the hot afternoon okay. sun. A little bit of dappled would be fine. Dappled shade is always great, but the hot, hot sun will burn these. Uh, okay. And hellebores, usually, okay, it's June already. We don't really talk right. about hellebores, but what a nice texture. Exactly. That's why I, am, I look at plants for year-round interest. These are part of the new gold collection, the hellebore gold collection. Um, it's a fantastic group of plants. They're Niger hybrids and similar species that hold their flowers up, not dangly down. And they, they don't have the quite the wide range of, of flowers, but they're prolific bloomers and they're early. Um, the earliest one I have blooms in um, late November. Wow. And then, but they hold the flowers for months. There's several different varieties here. There's some new ones. Pink Frost is one of That's these. Beauty. And it's one of the best I've ever seen. Yeah. Blooms for months. And the foliage is just fantastic. Ah, excellent. And now this one I love because it's got this kind of brownish burgundy foliage. It is. It's wonderful. That's Ubatorium chocolate. The first time I ever grew that, I thought there's no way that's going to grow well in the shade. Uh -huh. Tried it in the sun, it did not, not grow happy. in the sun at all. <laughs> and this is another wonderful fall bloomer. Um, it has beautiful foliage now, it comes up not too early, in, but mid-spring, comes up beautifully. And you have this wonderful color, even in full shade. Does need some moisture, but not too much. Mm -hmm. It can take a little dry, but needs some summer water. And then it has little clusters of white flowers oh, in September and October. Nice. And so a little shrub here, too. We have a couple shrubs here. There's two different Lakothaways. Mm -hmm. um, this is Zebleb, and this is Rainbow. What I like about them in the shade garden is they're this time of the year, they, the new growth has some bronzy colors. Pretty. This one actually has some variegation. But in the winter time, they're burgundy. Uh, so as nice. your, your shade perennials die down for the winter, here's your backdrop. And so it gives a really nice year-round interest in the garden. Nice. And I see you have Solomon Seal. Solomon Seal, that's another one. You just can't beat it. It's a wonderful texture. That little bit of white is very mm -hmm. colorful in the garden. Um, they've just finished blooming. They have little tiny white flowers early in the spring. And I just love how they kind of make 
little rambly groups in right. the garden. They're not just aggressive. Not aggressive at all. And then there's a cousin to this that's an evergreen Solomon seal. It says Disparatum um, per Pernii, ah. and it's a wonderful, shorter, it's only about 15 inches tall, has a nice thick leathery leaf. Actually, it's a little more prolific bloomer than this, but it's evergreen. Same kind of irregular little habit, um, but adds year-round interest to the nice. garden as well. And a hardy begonia. A hardy okay. begonia. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's a it, it's a late season bloomer. This is begonia grandis. Look at the leaves. and you. And this is what back. you grow it wow. for. It's yeah. the underside of the so leaves. Pretty. And they will get really large leaves. They get up in about the two-foot range. They have a um, little pink um, angel wing type simple flower in the fall, pretty. but it's still, you grow it for the foliage. The, oh. fall, the flower in the fall is a plus. Nice. And and then Ligularia, really a lot of different textures. You got There's, two really cool ones. Yeah, Ligularias are fantastic. They're one of my favorite plants. A lot of people don't grow them because they really are water hogs. Mm -hmm. But if you have a spot that stays moist, it doesn't have to be boggy. It just has to be moist mm -hmm. all summer long. They will not take summer dry. And they actually will take more sun than people give them credit for, but they're drama queens. If they get too dry, <laughs> they wilt. And then as soon as it cools down and, and they get watered, then they're like, oh, I'm good again. All right. So this, this taller one right here is Preswalski. Um, it gets to be about two feet wide and um, blooms actually almost in the six foot range. You can Whoa, see the buds just starting. Yeah. And what's nice about it, and they it blooms in July late June and July, and that's a great time to have flowers. And said so it will take full shade. It just needs the water. Uh -huh. And what about the one in the front? The one in the front is a newer type. It's a dentata type, so it has the larger leaves and the gold summer flowers, the daisy flowers. This is confetti. And if you can see, every leaf is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. That's what's fun about it. It'll get to be about a three by three. It really wants part to full shade. It doesn't like hardly any sun. It won't take any heat at all. Uh, well, this is just a small smattering of what Carol has here. You have to come out, really stroll through the gardens. They're beautiful for ideas. Bring your camera and look at these unbelievable oaks. Go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over to their website. Thanks for all the great information, right. Carol. Thanks, Judy. Come again sometime.